When we talked, we were talking about hypo, iso, and hypertonic solutions. So brief review, this is all involved with osmosis. A hypotonic solution is one in which there is a higher concentration of water outside than inside, which means that the inside of a cell is kind of salty compared to the outside. Water always moves from an area of high to low concentration. Another way to think about it is water is always trying to dilute the saltier area. So in this case, water rushes into the cell, it can pop. The opposite is also true. If you put a cell in really, really salty water, water is going to leave the cell to try to go dilute the ocean, for example. So water will leave. This is an area that is highly concentrated in water compared to salt. This is an area that is low concentration of water. So from high to low concentration, water leaves, that cell will shrivel up. Another form of passive transport, once again going down on the roller coaster from high to low concentration, involves facilitated diffusion. In this case, we're moving molecules that are either too big or molecules that don't like the lipid bilayer of our cell membrane. So they can't get through without any help. A good example of this, um, kind of an analogy for it, would be, let's say, for example, that you've got a whole crowd of people that are all trying to get into Disney World. Usually they have to walk through those little turnstile things, you know, the little rotating things. What if you've got somebody in a wheelchair? They're not going to make it through there, so they have a special gate. So that would be a large molecule or a molecule that just doesn't fit in the membrane. They need help, and that special gate involves facilitated diffusion. They're still going from an area of high to low concentration. So they're going from crowded areas to not crowded areas, going from the huge crowd outside of Disney World trying to get in when the doors open into the park, which is now currently empty. So high to low concentration, they're just using a special gate. Glucose only enters our cell through this method. Here's a picture for you. Outside of the cell, we have a high concentration of these glucose molecules or whatever other molecule we're talking about. The inside of the cell wants to have the same concentration but these little guys keep bouncing off, they can't get through the membrane. So they have to go through these cool little proteins which just help carry them through. Those proteins don't need any energy, they're always sitting around, they don't really have to change much about themselves to help that little molecule get through to the inside of the cell. And it's easy to go downhill from high concentration to low concentration. A very specific example of that is an ion channel. There's a channel, kind of like a tunnel, which goes through the proteins Cross the cell membrane that can let ions cross. Now, if you remember back to biochemistry, we talked about ions being things that have a positive charge. That's a cation. Remember, cations are positive. Or anions, they are negative. So anything that has a positive or negative charge doesn't naturally go through our cell membrane. It has to use these little channels or tunnels to get through that cell membrane. I don't remember why this slide is here. Oh yeah, gummy bear lab. Just time to finish the gummy bear lab. You will have time to finish that today. If you did not finish your lab report yesterday, you can use some of your review time. Get your group together. Make sure it's not just you finishing the lab. Get your whole group together, and then make sure that you get that finished and turn back into the basket for me today. Okay, on your second guided note sheet, the one that you just picked up today, we're going to talk about active transport now. Active transport uses energy. It requires energy because you're going uphill. You're going from an area of low concentration to high concentration. This is like pushing people into an already crowded area. They don't want to go. You got to kind of get behind them and shove them. There's only three ways that we can do this in cells. We have cell membrane pumps, endocytosis, and exocytosis. So we're going to talk about each of them individually. First one is that cell membrane pump kind of looks like facilitated diffusion with a couple small changes. First of all, you've got a protein, it's going to reach out and grab onto a molecule, but that protein now changes its shape drastically, and it has to force the molecule through the membrane to the other side. It requires energy, and the reason why it requires energy is because you're forcing those molecules. They don't want to go. It's a struggle, and you have to change the shape of that protein in order to do it. So here, let's look at the comparison contrast between passive transport, facilitated diffusion, and active transport, which was the example here with the cell membrane pump. So as you can see, normal diffusion, they just slide across from an area of high concentration to low concentration. With facilitated diffusion, once again, high concentration to low concentration, they're just going through those channels or those tunnels to, to be able to do that. 
no energy is required. You see no lightning bolts of energy. Over here with active transport, we've only got two up here. We've already got five down here, but we're going to force more across the membrane. In order to do that, this molecule, as you can see, is kind of rocking back and forth. It's completely changing shape. And to do that, we have to zap it with ATP, which is our form of energy. And in response, we're going to force this little round molecule back out. These two um, triangles, or I'm sorry, triangle. I know my shapes. These two diamonds have to be forced across the membrane this way. And in order to do that, cell molecules don't want to do that. It takes energy in the form of ATP. So that's the difference between facilitated diffusion on this side and a cell membrane pump on this side. Changing the shape of that protein, using energy, and forcing them uphill from low concentration to high concentration. The last two are endo and exocytosis, which are opposites of each other. Endocytosis, I want you to think end, like in. You're bringing it in, in cytosis. It's how cells are going to take large molecules into the cell using something called a vesicle. So basically what they do is they wrap up the cell's product that they're looking for in a little piece of cell membrane. It's kind of like if you had a great big winter coat on and you found a kitten and the kitten was cold, and you're like, oh, come here, kitty. And so you just wrap your coat around the kitten to hug it close to your body. That would be endocytosis. There's two specific ways that cells can do this for drinking and for eating. It's how they take in big, big particles. Exocytosis is the opposite. So you've got that kitten all cuddled up in your um, jacket, and he's getting warm, but now he starts to claw you. Maybe he's smelly. Maybe he's got fleas. He's a stray, after all. You want to get rid of him. So instead of taking him in by wrapping him up in your coat, you're going to send him out, wrap him up in your coat, and then send him away from you. Drop him out with the Humane Society. Be nice. Be good to that little kitten. So it's the exact opposite, and it's used in our cells for sending out proteins. Most of the exocytosis in your cells happens using the Golgi apparatus. And this is what it looks like. So endocytosis, here's our kitten that we found, that little stray kitten. And so we're going to bring him close to us, wrap him up in the cell membrane, and you'll see that there's a second layer around him now. And so that's a vesicle. A vesicle is that little pocket of membrane that is being used to bring in something into the cell. Now when we don't want it anymore, we wrap it up in a vesicle, we bring it out closer and closer and closer to the cell membrane, that, mem that little vesicle will pop and release those materials out away from the cell. This was supposed to be animated I'm sorry that it isn't. I'll try and figure out how to get that. Um, but you can also check on Google Classroom and see the animated version of this in the original PowerPoint. I'll pause it here for just a moment or have the sub pause it here for just a moment so that you can draw if you need to. Um, and then I'll show you one more picture. Here's just a close-up version of what's happening in that cell membrane when we send things out through exocytosis. So we've wrapped it up in a layer of membrane. That membrane gets close to the outer membrane of the cell, the actual cell membrane, and all those little pieces just kind of combine with what used to be part of the cell membrane, and then we're able to release that. And whatever was originally in that vesicle just kind of merges with and becomes part of the cell membrane. And then you can reverse the process as well. Let's say there's something out there that you want. You just bend in the cell membrane, keep bending it in until you wrap it up completely, and then wrap it up in a vesicle and bring it into the cell wherever we need it to be. I hope that helped you guys. Um, there's a crash course video that you can watch that goes over this as well, and doing the worksheet on it is worth extra credit. So that is linked for you in Google Classroom, and the worksheets should be available to you if you'd like to use them. Use your time wisely, get studied up for the test tomorrow, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me, call me, or text me. I'm at a pretty boring meeting today, and I would much rather be with you. Have a great time. Bye.